Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. As you can see by the title of the video, I thought that I would make a little Q&A of my most frequently asked questions about my vestibulectomy surgery. Vestib vest I still don't know how to say that. I have people reach out probably every other week and I love it. Comment on my Instagram if you have any questions, you can personally message me. and. I get lots of the same questions over and over, which is totally fine, but I also wanted to make a little video about it. Let's get into it. If you don't know what a vestibulectomy is, it's vagina surgery. So essentially, I had an overgrowth of mast cells in my vestibule, which is the area around your vaginal opening that I had to get removed because it was painful to the touch. I could insert tampons, but anything bigger than that was very, very painful, and it would get little tears. I have lots of videos about how I found out, how I found my surgeon, and I am now over a year, a year and a month post-op, and I don't have any pain anymore. So, the first one I get is, what is your diagnosis? Mine is provoked neuroproliferative vestibulodynia. And from what I understand, this means that it hurts when it's provoked, so touched or, you know, something is inserted or whatnot. It's kind of a nerve issue. Um, and another question I get is, how did you get this? From what I understand, my doctor has explained you're either born with it or what he thinks in my case is I had a yeast infection when I was like 12. Pretty sure they put me on some type of cream and he thinks I had an allergic reaction to it. And that was my body's way of trying to heal itself is going overboard and those mast cells just kept producing. So there were an overgrowth of nerves in that area which would obviously make it painful to touch. I also had keratin pearls which those were located, they're just these little, like you can't even see them with your human eye, barely. These little pearl white things in my clitoris, I had about 12 of them. And my clitoral hood was also fused down, so I couldn't lift it up. And um, this is just like an overgrowth of protein that happens and it, it's from not washing well enough. I never knew that you were supposed to lift your hood up and let the water kind of drain down to clean that area. Um, and I think just growing up, I was just more prone to getting infections and stuff. And so he removed those keratin pearls and it has really made a difference with just the sensitivity of my clitoris. It's much less sensitive, which is nice. The next question is, why didn't I go to a surgeon where I live? So I live in Utah and I had surgery in San Diego. And honestly, it wasn't really, it wasn't really something that my husband and I talked about for very long. After we found an OBGYN that actually knew what was going on, she said, please go to this surgeon because a lot of surgeons do not do the surgery correctly. They will only do partial vestibulectomies, which means that they only take out part of the skin. They won't take out everything around it from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And that is the only way that you can become pain-free is if all of those cells are removed. So she said, please, if you can consider going to this one. My sister lives out in San Diego, so I was like, well, we can just go on a trip, see her, and I can get surgery. And um, it's really not that bad of a flight. It's about an hour and a half to two hours. I like California, so we just made a trip out of it. Another question I get is how long did it take to become pain-free? I got my surgery in September of 2021, about, about September 17th. And I would say I was pain-free by February or March. I have a video talking about how I got to that point. After the surgery, it's about like a six to 12 week recovery where you have the stitches and everything. And then you can start going to physical therapy. Physical therapy was going good. There was one really irritated part on like the bottom left-hand side, like closer to my back, I guess, where I could feel there was a lot of scar tissue. And 
I would do my own massage and dilators multiple times a day to try to break that scar tissue up. One thing that really helped was I got this gel from Amazon. It's 4% lidocaine. I would put that on. It would kind of numb the area before I would do the dilators. And the thing that really took it over the edge, you can watch my last video on it, but we decided that we wanted to start a family, which by the way, tomorrow I am 22 weeks. So that's exciting. Subscribe if you want to see baby content and whatnot. But we decided we wanted to start a family. And so I was like, let's just do it. Like I, I don't feel that ready, but like I didn't want to be scared to have sex because that's how I felt the last two years of my marriage. And so I was like, okay, let's just, let's just do it. And honestly, it made a huge difference. And I'm not saying to go out and find someone to have sex with to make your vagina feel better after surgery. You can do it with dilator and stuff or like whatever, you know, whatever your situation is. But that is what we did. And honestly, after like three times, because my husband is bigger than all the dilators that I have, it just magically, I think, tore that scar tissue up and it was crazy. Then I didn't have pain. The next question, was the surgery successful? This is a loaded question. I would say yes, the surgery was successful. I don't have the same pain that I had before, but I wouldn't say my sex life is where I want it to be or things feel what the quote unquote normal is for other girls. I don't, I don't really know what the normal is, to be honest. I think there's probably a spectrum, but um, the thing that's working against me now is I am on antidepressants that have absolutely killed my sex drive. I had like 1% of a sex drive before, and then I switched medication to get pregnant, and it's 0%, like negative percent. And so um, one thing that I feel a lot is... From the research I've done, I've learned that when you get aroused and turned on, your organs and uterus actually like move up in your body and create more room. But because I don't ever get aroused really, that's not happening. And so I feel like I'm being punched from the inside. That's the way that I explain it. Lots of punching going on and it's not comfortable. We've tried different positions. I think that's just, I think the issue is I'm just, I just don't know how to get turned on. And once we have the baby, um, I'm going to try some other things and I will keep documenting it because I just think it's an important topic and everyone should be able to be happy in their sex life. And it's just so complicated and there's so many people out there that also struggle. So why are we not talking about it? But that's just me. Anyway. Yes, the surgery was successful. I don't have pain. I'm not where I want to be, but we're going to get there after the baby comes. How much did the surgery cost? So we saved $10,000 for the surgery. It was not covered by insurance. I don't think it ever is, honestly, because they, they count it as an elective surgery, which is stupid. But we saved $10,000. I think the surgery was like 7200 then there were some other hospital fees that were a couple thousand, anesthesia and whatnot. Of course, the bills kept coming after we ran out of that money, and so we put it on a credit card and we're still paying it off. Not ideal, but I don't regret it one bit. That is a huge thing that people ask me because the cost I know is so much, and trust me, I am not rolling in the dough. I make $18 an hour and so does my husband. Like we just work normal people jobs and we just worked our butts off, sold a lot of things around our house. My husband sold his car. It was just a really big priority to be able to get this surgery. We're still recovering from it financially, but we have our whole lives ahead of us and it's not something that it's not something I allow myself to stress out about because I am a stress case, especially when it comes to finances kind of a control freak so it's just something that I've had to tell myself you know this is just a phase of life in literally five years it'll be over with and it was worth it so that we could get pregnant and have a happy marriage next question did you fly home the same day yes I did and that is actually recommended by the doctor and I would 
strongly recommend it because the way they numb you from the surgery is like so phenomenal. It's, I could not feel anything for probably two days and then the pain started kicking in. So I'm so glad that literally I woke up from surgery and went straight to the airport. Actually, I think I like slept in the hotel for a couple hours, but then we went right to the airport. Um, my husband just got a wheelchair, pushed me around. I sat on a little donut cushion thing. The flight wasn't too bad, it wasn't too long. And honestly, I was feeling really good when we got home. I would say the next day this, the pain started kicking in, but I'm really glad that we decided to fly on the same day. The next question, did you try other treatments first? Yes, I did. I tried lots of other things. Um, it took a while to even figure out what the real issue was. So of course, people that were not knowledgeable just said, oh, you just have anxiety. You need to go to sex therapy so you can learn to relax and not be scared of sex. And I was like, I'm not scared of sex. I don't, I don't think I'm scared of it. We still went to sex therapy. You know, people, a lot of doctors diagnosed me with yeast infections, which there was no evidence of. We tried a bunch of creams, tried switching medications or oral medications, whatnot. It's all documented in all of my videos. The reason that I was like, okay, I'm done after about a year is because we were wasting so much money. And I was like, if the only permanent fix is this surgery, then let's just save our money that we're wasting on all these other appointments and get the freaking surgery <laughs> because I just wanted it to be over and I wanted a for sure solution and that's the only way is to get the surgery. So that is why we did that because I didn't want to waste any more money. The last question is, I have a lot of people ask about how it's affected my relationship and this can be so hard. I, my heart goes out to anyone struggling with this, whether you are in a relationship or not, because it's so hard to not feel guilty for having the pain. It's hard to feel like you want to do stuff when you are literally in unbearable pain. I felt bad for my husband, but he felt bad for me. And I'm just so grateful that he was so supportive. He did not ever blame me because I didn't do anything <laughs> to make this pain happen but i also tried to keep in mind how he was feeling because i've had little glimpses in my life of feeling aroused and turned on very little but i would put myself in his shoes and think well if i was i was there how would i feel if my wife didn't want to ever do anything and so i would try to be and i still try to be very conscious of how long it's been since we've you know done something sexual. I know that he is sacrificing and not getting exactly what he wants or as often as he wants and I'm sacrificing by you know doing it more than I want but that's just a relationship and he knows it's because I love him. I just think it's so important put yourselves in each other's shoes because he sees my perspective why I would not want to do anything and I see his and yeah we just have to communicate and make it work if you're not in a steady relationship I honestly don't really have advice I just feel so bad because I know a lot of girls are like they just avoid sex like the plague because like how do you explain that to someone you know and it's so hard it's so hard you just want to be normal and you don't want to be that weird person, but if it hurts, like, what are you going to do? You know, you can't act like it doesn't hurt because I, I totally understand. Literally it brings you to tears. If your partner is not supportive and doesn't understand, I would try to talk to them, try to let them know exactly how it feels and let them know that you understand them. They have needs as well and try to come up with some type of happy medium. I hope that helps. That is probably the hardest thing to navigate. I know people that have had this issue and it's destroyed their relationships. I know people that it's made their relationship stronger. I'm very grateful that my husband is understanding and that we haven't had to deal with this for as long as a lot of other people. But yeah, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. I will do whatever I can to answer your questions. 
and I hope this video has been helpful. Let me know what else you want to see. I know I haven't touched on this topic for a minute, but kind of been in the trenches here with being 22 weeks pregnant. It's kicking my butt. Talk to you guys later. Bye.